Welcome to Top Solid Cam. In this sample, we're going to take a look at 5-axis contouring and show you some of the cool tools that are available to you within Top Solid Cam. If I zoom out here, you're going to see that we have a nice big gantry style machine. And what we're going to look at is doing some 5-axis contouring on this simple little part. And what we want to look at are some of the controls that are available to Top Solid during the programming process. Let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the 4 and 5 axis menus and choose 5 axis contouring. I'm going to choose the profile here at the top going around this part. Like that I'll say OK. I'll validate the direction and we're going to choose this simple little tool. It's just a simple little end mill. But maybe it's not so simple. Maybe this is a diamond coated end mill because we're cutting some very abrasive material and we want to get the most we can out of our cutter and take into consideration cutter wear. Let's see what happens. Well, to begin with, I'm going to go down here and say I want to cut right to finish. And I'm going to go to a depth of maybe 6 millimeters. And next, I'll go to Geometry. And I'm going to select all these top faces of the part to take into consideration during my programming. And the reason why I would do that is because it'll help us dynamically set the vector for the cutting tool. Like that, my selection is done. I'll say OK. We can go take a quick look at the cutting conditions and see we're at 1890 millimeters per minute. And let's just validate. Like that, the toolpath calculation is complete. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and we'll let the machine simulation take over. And what we're looking at here is to see how this cutting tool is going to come in and machine. So like that, we're coming down and we're machining. And you would expect any 5-axis software to be able to do what I'm showing you here. And that's okay, but if you notice, I'm going to pause maybe right there. If you notice, we're only cutting with a small area of the tool. And again, if this is a very abrasive material, that tool is going to wear very, very quickly. And likely you're going to throw that tool out and throw a new tool in. And that's really what I want to show you how to resolve in this video. Okay, so let's escape out of the simulation and let's have a look. What I'm going to introduce you to is something we call sinusoidal machining. In fact, it's very easy. You set your sine periodic value and your amplitude value. In this case, I'm going to say 10 millimeters. And what that means is I want to take into consideration using 10 millimeters of the flute length of my cutter. Let's say OK. Like that, the calculation is done. And if you look, the tool path looks like a sine curve. Let's watch the simulation. And in fact, what's really going to happen here is the tool is going to move up and down while machining in 5-axis to take into consideration the entire flute of your cutting tool. This will help increase the life of the cutting tool so that you can machine more parts with the same cutter. And that's pretty cool. We'll let this go around the corner real fast. You can see that it's no problem. But I want to take something else into consideration. Sometimes on these machines, you have a problem when it comes to feed rates in tight corners, outside versus inside corners. And we're feeding at a very aggressive feed rate. So what I want to do, in fact, is I want to maybe control the feed rate a little bit better. And sometimes it's just impossible to do with inside of a dialog box for 5-axis machining. Sometimes the best way is to use the model itself to drive this. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to 4 and 5 axis milling again. Oh, pardon me. I'm going to go to part and go to modify. And here I'm going to turn on feed rate modification in 5 axis contouring. Now I could do this by selecting some specific faces and applying a feed rate change. But in fact, I want to do it to multiple different faces. So I'm going to do it based on color. So here I'm going to start by saying I'll select that color. And for the that color blue, I want to stay at my program feed rate. However, for the color green here, I want to reduce my feed rate to maybe 50 because my machine really struggles in tight corners and I don't want to over travel the machine. Let's add another one. And here we'll go to the outside corners. And the outside corners, it can go a little bit faster, so I'm going to maybe increase it to 250. And like that, I'll say OK and validate and just regenerate once. Now I'm going to hit save. And let's go ahead and post this out and show you the result. So here I'm just going to grab a standard Fanuc style post processor. We'll validate, validate, and save. 
and up will pop the toolpath. Now here's our program feed rate, which makes sense. If you remember, let me just dock this over here. If you remember, when we started down here, we're going at 1,890 millimeters per minute, but once we get into this quarter, we want to slow down to 50, right? There's no 5-axis code required in those first movements, and once we get into that corner, look at that, feed rate of 50. Once we're through the corner, we want to go back to 1,890, and now once we get up to the top here, to this corner, we want to go to feed rate of 250. So this is just showing you creative ways to control your toolpath and your feed rate and get the most bang for your buck out of your cutting tools, all without having to think too hard to get the job done. Thanks for watching and check back soon for some more cool details about Top Solid Camp.